with the first of our groups. So go for it. Good morning. I'm Lynn Laughlin, the <coughs> executive teaching kitchen chef at Lancaster River House. We're a 125 year old settlement house on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Um, and we produce about uh, 400,000 institutional meals a year, and about 40% of it over the last eight years we have uh, trans transitioned to local products. Thank you. I'm Tiana Kennedy. I'm a farmer in the Catskills with Eleanor and Ken and some others. And I've been um, developing a CSA in the city, um, but also have been working towards trying to aggregate local farms to get to restaurants and other establishments in the city. And guys, you can pick up the mic. You don't have to bend over too hard. <laughs> Olivia? I'll pick up the mic. Yeah. You know I am. My name is Olivia Blanchflower. I'm the Director of Wholesale and Distribution at Grow NYC. Um, I oversee Grow NYC's efforts to uh, purchase food from farms in our region, aggregate them in our warehouse, and then distribute them to wholesale buyers throughout the city. I'm Bill Pelpen. I've been a chef in New York City for over 20 years and been buying from the green markets and from everybody around us uh, for a very long time. So that's what I contribute. Wellness. Oh, and also I'm the executive chef of wellness in the schools. <laughs> it's a nonprofit that brings healthy cooking and fitness into the cafeteria. And I'm also the uh, director of sustainability at the Institute of Culinary Education, if that's one. I'm a father of one. <laughs> um, I'm an <a> Aries. <laughs> and, and Lynn, did you mention you're a farmer too? No, I'm a, a farmer in the gas skills for the last 20 years. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I mean, this is just a fantastic panel, as was the last one. I mean, I just can't believe it. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Um, look, um, here we are uh, talking about, actually, segue was perfect from the previous panel to talk about how do we get the bounty of the watershed to the city. This, this is really the key issue, getting things from one place to another. You may have read yesterday's New York Times about uh, last mile delivery of uh, packages from uh, everybody, er everywhere, Amazon, and, uh, and the challenges of, uh, of getting things um, uh, down or stream from where they're being produced. This has really been uh, a <laughs> decades long challenge, and I have to say that um, it really relates to the role of, of the city itself. I have to be as an advocate for markets uh, when state government and prior to that um, with Grow NYC's uh, beginnings with the green market uh, beginning efforts. Uh, really, the, the use of the public space at green market and Union Square and elsewhere is essential to this. Without the use of that public space permitted by the city, uh, city plannings, Department of Transportation and other uh, agencies, without that, special piece of infrastructure, uh, we, would, we would really not have this special linkage. So I have to put in a pitch for the fact that market infrastructure, as you may know, exists in the city, Hunts Point Market, uh, and other regional markets that people have forgotten about, the Brooklyn Terminal Market, um, and the city's own network of retail markets, the Essex Market and others, these are part of the city's legacy and long-term term commitment to physical infrastructure that enables this linkage to occur. So while everything uh, else is easily visible during the day, the city's role in the streets and DEP uh, with all of its infrastructure and the courts and the schools, this is essentially the, the public infrastructure that we all need. The role of markets has unfortunately been, been forgotten the, the city used to have a department of markets. Uh, and after all, the national system of distribution made it seem that it was no longer needed. But as we all know, the revival of markets has been so beneficial for farmers and for everyone in the city. We need to recommit ourselves to the important role of public markets, and in this case, also wholesale markets. I only want to mention that because the backdrop of everything that we're trying to do here relates to getting things from a rural source into a city which is really, in a sense, a public responsibility as much as it is a private one. So um, what we're dealing with here is what, what often is referred to as agriculture in the middle. 
you have small farmers who are willing to go to a farmer's market, but honestly, they, they can't really connect with a wholesale buyer at a farmer's market, uh, and the wholesale growers can't go to a retail market. How do we do that? And so for the last decades, people have tried and, to develop alternatives uh, to a public direct market uh, in the city uh, that would accommodate all buyers in the city. And some of those are going to be are represented today during lunch. As you uh, enjoy your meal, you're going to get a chance to take a look at the uh, seven hubs, we can call them, or aggregation points that are actually handling Catskill Region or Watershed Region products, which we've asked to come here and be part of this event today. So you'll see Grow NYC, you'll see Regional Access, you'll see Catskill Food Hub, you'll see the 607 Hub. These are the people who are trying to put this together. So I will stop, but I want to start again um, and give uh, Olivia the, the first opportunity to talk about what Grow NYC has done above and beyond the retail markets that, that are attracting the chefs. And, and so Olivia, if you don't mind, give us a... So uh, our wholesale distribution program is called Green Market Co. And the purpose of that program is really to pick up where our uh, farmer's market program leaves off. Our farmer's markets are amazing. I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. We support um, more than 200 farm businesses that uh, keep tens of thousands of farmland in production. We have the biggest um, food stamp in the farmer's market uh, program in the entire country and a farmer technical assistance arm that's helping farmers with everything from marketing to succession planning to new farmer training. Um, but not every buyer, as Bob said, can get to a farmer's market to shop and not every farm is scaled to sell by the piece or by the pound uh, to the smiling faces of New York City. So in 2012, we established uh, Green Market Co. with the intent of supporting local farm businesses by getting them access to the wholesale market, especially those farmers in the middle that are not well scaled for a farmer's market, but who also are not large enough to compete on a global conventional supply chain. Um, and at the same time, make sure that those healthy, fresh, really high quality local products are getting equitably distributed throughout Green Market Co. So we work with um, over 50 growers and grower cooperatives. Um, ranging from you know, large, large orchards in western New York to um, hydroponic operations in Utica to folks who have uh, been farming their land, their farming, families been farming their land for 200 years to folks who started a couple of years ago with the help of our Farmer Technical Assistance Program. Um, you know, really recently we've gotten some aggregation help from Tiana's farm, which has been great because it's, believe it or not, it's kind of hard to buy watermelons wholesale. And we really needed those. <laughs> um, we purchased from these farmers outright. Um, all of their names are featured on our product list, so anyone purchasing from us knows uh, the farm from, from whence that product came. We're aggregating in our warehouse and then we're distributing throughout the city to wholesale buyers. Um, and our wholesale buyer list contains people that you would expect, like restaurants and retailers. Um, we also work with a number of institutions, including Lenox Hill Neighborhood House, who's uh, who, who really kind of tipped us off to the fact that institutions might be a really important um, way for us to be moving more farm products in the city. Um, we also work with nonprofit organizations who are helping to make food more accessible throughout the city, whether it's through food pantry efforts or their own food retail programming. And then we also supply Grow NYC's um, two internal food access programs, Youth Market, which is a network of youth-run farm stands, and our Food Box program, which is a uh, group buying program that allows people to purchase product for below retail prices. Um, a couple of things that have been really important for Green Market Co. have just been that traceability. Um, a lot of folks have told us that um, you know other other distributors, broadline distributors, definitely don't promise that same traceability. For us, it's really important to put the farmers front and center um, and make sure that their businesses are you know visible in the city and that people really have that connection to food. The other thing that's really important for us is connecting communities with local food, with with food grown in the region. Um, 
in a way that they maybe didn't have access to. And some of the work that we're most proud of is um, providing training to nonprofit organizations throughout the city. And Gail's uh, food box program, they were one of the first folks that we trained. Jan Schul is in the audience who really make that, makes that happen every week. Um, Gail approached us early on in, in the life of Co when we were still figuring out food box and said, we really need a food box and we were sort of at capacity. And, and I think we all know that Gail doesn't take no for an answer. And she said, well, just tell us how to do it and we'll run it. Um, and what, what happened was really a great um, uh, customization of the program. Our, our shares contain six to 10 items and, and cost $14. Gail's shares are targeted towards senior citizen audiences who maybe don't need six to 10 items. And it was a really great example of how communities can kind of leverage this wholesale infrastructure to create something that's the exact fit and the exact shape for the people that they want to serve. So we have trained um, more than 50 organizations throughout the city in our program best practices. We're probably serving 30 active programs now, and our trainees distribute um, more than 300,000 pounds of fresh local produce throughout the city every single year. And um, all that training was made possible thanks to funding from the Department of Ag and Markets, who are really working hard to um, make sure that we're getting local food into every community in New York City. Um, looking toward the future, we are really excited to do even more work in the Catskills, um, thanks to a new facility that we've got uh, coming online that will allow us to really branch out in terms of our both volume and product line. Um, in 2016, Governor Cuomo announced a $15 million incentive proposal to help Grow NYC build the New York State Green Market Regional Food Hub which will be a, an approximately 70,000 square foot facility of which Co will occupy 20,000 square feet. Um, we'll move from a 5,000 square foot facility with a couple of different temperature zones to a state-of-the-art facility to, you know, built to the utmost level of uh, food safety that will allow us to um, really expand our product line, get more into meat, I, I'm waiting for the day when we can have local ice cream at my fingertips in the warehouse <laughs> <laughs> and, and continue to make those connections between um, the really rich agricultural regions in our state, like the Catskills and all of the eaters down here that really want that food. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Tiana, uh, in a way, you're, you're wearing two hats, uh, the grower and the uh, kind of say aggregation initiator. Could you tell us a little bit about that sort of shipping point work? Because this is what we, we in the, in the uh, world of marketing call the receiving end or the terminal end. This is the shipping point end. So tell us a bit about what's happening up there. Um, sure. So I moved up state about a decade ago and I was working for Richard Giles at Lucky Dog Farm. And he's one of the anchor farms in our region. A really wonderful man. And, um, he was doing wholesale at the time with, uh, I can't remember, his room, Angelos. And I, it was a, this unwieldy, huge operation with all these like 17 year olds shuffling their feet. And he was losing money hand over fist with um, natural disaster after natural disaster. And I was like, Richard, you really gotta get into the city market. You know, you gotta do this. And he was like, Tiana, you're either a farmer or a distributor, and I'm a farmer, I don't wanna do that. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And he was like, fine, you do it. <laughs> so so I, I, a decade ago, got a lucky dog back into the green markets, started those markets, um, did the hard work of getting up at 2 a.m. and doing all that schlepping and, um, for a couple of years. And then helped connect him to restaurants. Um, Andrew Tarlow is here in the audience. I had done wood finishing in the city and got to finish Romans, which was one of the restaurants that those guys started. So I had a little personal connection and I like begged them to work with Richard to buy some potatoes that he had. And so we started this relationship with, with restaurants. So when I started my own farm, um, I had no money. <laughs> I had student loan debt. And um, I decided to do a CSA model. And so I looked to Eleanor and Patrick who were, were kind of our classmates, I guess, in starting farms of state. And I knew that they were great farmers, and and so I knew that I'd mitigate some risk if we did a, a CSA project together. And then I thought, well, since I'm already aggregating, I may as well bring a couple other farms in, and then we could do a full day CSA. 
So we started um, basically doing this little multi-farm CSA on the back of Richard, who was coming down anyway to do markets and was willing to um, fill up his truck with some other farms. Um, so that's how this all started. Five years later, um, the CSA is over 400 members, 20 locations, um, 20 farms, and um, Richard, the next generation aren't interested in, in helping, um, they're interested in focusing on their farm business, and so they took out their hub services, and over the past two years, we've been struggling to find that trucking to the city. Um, last year, it sort of fell apart completely, and our whole region suffered and so this winter, we decided to grow the CSA large enough to become an anchor business for a third-party trucker, Annie Myers, who's amazing, from Vermont. And so by giving her 1400 a week <laughs> to, to come down here, she's able to also not just take our 20 farms, but take the Amish farmers to Green Market Co. and the egg farmers to Windsor Terrace and add on to, to my pallets that are still being hosted by Richard. And I'd like to, um, I guess, just underscore the fact that most of it's, a, it's sort of a gift economy. Like most of this, if we were to actually do our budgets, none of this would happen. Like I do it for free, basically. Richard provides space for free. Like, you know, it's, the relationships are, are, are what keep this going. Um, but it's definitely a labor of love. And Richard was right. And that's why I asked for the producer badge right in the hub badge because I, this is all just to like put beans in the ground, you know. I just want to farm, and but you have to work on the apparatus in order to to do the the work that you love. Thank you so much. Well, we um, we've already mentioned each other, and so that's we already have people who know and work it to know each other and work together. So Lynn, would you talk a little bit about not only your, I guess you're wearing two hats, but also just how much uh, you see the, the potential is for institutions to work with farmers like you have and to teach about it. Um, well, I've had the pleasure of working at Lenox Hill Neighborhood House at ASET, which is a 125 year old organization for the last eight years. And I was hired eight years ago as the executive chef. Um, for the last three years, I've been the executive teaching kitchen chef at Lenox Hill. So for the first five years, Lenox Hill Neighborhood House was interested um, eight years ago in transform transforming their food service program to much fresher food and more plant-based meals. And where possible, they wanted to source it locally and they wanted to keep the prices the same. And so we have worked for the last eight years and are continuing to work on doing this transformation. We went from 90% um, frozen and canned vegetables and produce to 90% fresh in the first five years. We sourced a lot of regional grains. We have uh, the chefs who have taken it over uh, since I became a teaching kitchen chef have made great strides. We are currently at 60% vegetarian meals, and this has been a huge part of our puzzle to allow us to spend more money on quality products that are regional products. Um, I think that, I should say also, we provide the food 8,000 meals a week for two senior centers, a homeless shelter in the Park Avenue Armory, a Head Start program, an after school program, a summer camp, an assisted living facility in East Harlem, and meals, all, and meals for our staff of 250 people. Um, this is, seemed daunting at uh, eight years ago. But I think that our um, recipe for success uh, has been that we have been able to, uh, through the organizational will of Lenox Hill Neighborhood House, and in knowing that we needed to do this work slowly and really incrementally, um, and that's how we have made the changes that we've made. Um, the local piece that we're all here today for was really made possible by